spoke about yesterday as well. Yes, uh, Tracy Regan, hello to you. Tanner family member, uh, memories as well. Good to see you all. Yeah, the Uvalde, uh, well, I suppose you could call it a massacre, a disaster where a uh, uh, young, uh, what was he, 18, 19 year old kid walked in there with a high powered assault rifle and killed all those children and two teachers. Very, very awful situation. Horrible day. Uh, and there's lots of information now coming out about who did what, who said what, what should have happened here, what should have happened there, and more importantly, could it have been stopped? And I watched a, a critique uh, last night from Police Off The Cuff, and I also know uh, my other friend, Duty Run, covered this as well. Now, whenever I see stuff uh, going on over there, uh you know from their perspective and they and they give it from the american perspective sometimes that story comes up in our press as well and i always like to kind of cover it from our perspective as well uh, and let you know what they're saying over here and uh here you go obviously uh just to reiterate the story it was rob elementary school uh in Yavaldi and uh you know loads and loads of kids were murdered and a, uh, and a couple of teachers as well i think it was something like uh 19 kids and two teachers absolutely awful all gunned down by uh a young uh 18 19 year old kid who was eventually gunned down by law enforcement at the time awful uh, hello, Anna Perkins. Uh, good to see you. And Cosmic War Toad as well. Michael May too. Yes, we're getting reports out that, you know, they're trying to say, could this have been stopped? Uh, could, could this have been stopped before before it began? Because it, could it have been stopped a, a long time before it actually was? Now, there was an interesting statistic uh, I heard. There, there's a disparity between how long what they term an active shooter carries on for and how long law enforcement takes to respond to an active shooter and the whole discussion is trying to slow that active shooter down uh in order to give law enforcement more time to respond and i think it was something like 19 minutes this whole thing went on for uh before you know he was eventually taken out i mean what we've got in our press we've got first photo inside Yavaldi shooting revealed as police chief admits gunman could have been stopped in three minutes uh now that's a hell of a thing to come out with uh considering all the death and destruction uh i mean i'll show you this picture if it comes out this apparently was taken from inside the hallway uh now there's a cop there with what looks like quite a high powered rifle and another one just off picture as well with what looks like a shield now they're they're calling it a ballistic shield uh in the press but it it looks like some kind of riot shield and the one of the arguments is uh is should they have waited uh or should they have just gone straight in there lots of the Lots of the police officers are saying uh, that have uh, analysed this. Uh, they broke the basic tenant of active shooting straight in there, straight to the gunfire, take it out, save life. Uh, that seems to be uh, what, you know, where, what the general consensus is. And there's the uh, there's the uh, situation with the door as well, which they were waiting for the keys for. And uh, there's now a rumour going around that the damn door wasn't locked in the first place. So didn't somebody think to try it? Uh, it's, yeah. I mean, here we go. I, I'm. Let's get this clear. I'm not critiquing in any way. I, I'm just, you know, saying out loud. I'm, I'm not law enforcement. I'm a cab driver, for Christ's sake. But it's... <laughs> I want to feel the need to say something from the British point of view, according to what's being reported. Uh, enough armed police officers to stop the shooting at Rob Elementary School arrived within three minutes of when the gunman began firing. A top law enforcement official in Texas said on Tuesday, think about that, enough 
law enforcement officials were there. Uh, police officers in Uvalde, Texas, stood in a hallway of the school holding rifles for 77 minutes, waiting for additional manpower and other tactical gear before they finally stormed the classroom and killed the gunman who had already killed 19 students and two teachers. Now, as my understanding, there was a lot of uh, 911 calls from the kids in the classroom uh, when some officers, including apparently the chief of the uh, police of the school police department, tried to approach the door. Uh, they were fired upon and a couple grazed. And there are various, you know, uh, accounts of this coming out. Uh, none of the police officers tried to enter the two classrooms in which the gunman killed 21 people, despite earlier claims they had to wait so long to enter because the doors were locked and they were waiting on keys. Now, I, I remember a, a critique of this from a, a tactical point of view, looking at all the windows and things from outside. If the door was there, why didn't they go through the windows? Um, I'm not sp saying spray bullets all over the place. There was kids in there, for Christ's sake. But a door, what? I, there's just so much misinformation coming out of here. Uh, I don't care if you have uh, have on flip-flops and Bermuda shorts, you go in, Director of Texas Department of Public Safety, Steve McGraw said uh, Tuesday during a Senate committee hearing, this is what I, I read and what I heard last night, you know, when there's an active shooter incident, particularly if there's children involved, as there was in this case, you don't fuck around, you go in and uh, you you do necessary i mean apparently there was parents trying to get in the place as well if i i'd want to go through the damn window if that was my son in there and i'm sure there's a, a lot of parents that feel the same the newly released surveillance footage was obtained by the austin american statesman and kvue tv and shared before the hearing so there was surveillance uh, there was videos in there. The officers had weapons. The children had none. The officers had body armor. The children had none. The officers had training. The subject had none, McCrawl said. So the strong implication there is, why didn't they go in? Why, what was stopping them? Uh, McGraw called the police response to the shooting one of the deadliest in recent US history, an abject failure, and said it was anti uh, antithetical to the lessons learned since Columbine High School in 1999. Now, there's a lot of uh, muckraking going on, saying the police are cowards, the police didn't go in, the police should have gone in. But there's a very big aspect to this, which is a basic failure of command. They, you know, they, they should have, they should have gone in. Not only was the door to enter the classroom unlocked, but the lock was broken. McGraw said, noting that the teacher had requested the door to be fixed before the shooting. Now, if they were waiting for keys and the door was unlocked, that implies to me that nobody thought to check the lock on the door to see if it was open. Uh, I, I can't quite get my head around that. Uh, I have great reasons to believe it was never secured, McGraw said of the door. How about trying the door and seeing if it's locked? The delayed response by law enforcement officials have been the subject of both state and federal investigations, and the newly released information seems to indicate that officers could have taken down the gunman sooner than they did. Now, I, I don't know whether uh, this information is accurate anymore, but I, I read somewhere that they were told to hold. Uh, yeah, J John Harris, they, they have breaching shotguns, don't they, particularly for going through doors and going through door locks to get at people very quickly. I mean, you have the added thing that the kids were there, but, uh, but you know, even me as a layman, I sit here and think, what the fuck went wrong? Because something certainly did. Uh, the gunman Salvador Ramos uh, entered the school at 11.33 a.m. local time. Within three minutes, 11 police officers had arrived at the school. An officer with a ballistic shield was at the school by 11.52. They they say about the ballistic shield that there is talk, or, or I, I've seen notes that a shield of that kind wouldn't have stopped around from a, from a high-powered assault rifle. Uh, it's here and all there, really. Uh, you go in even if you're wearing shorts to save life.
to save young life. Police finally entered the classroom at 12.50 and uh, took down the gunman. McGraw specifically criticised the on-scene commander for ordering officers to wait uh, to, to confront a shooter rather than storming the classroom immediately. Now, he, he had his reasons apparently for saying wait. There are uh, reasons that have been changing from what I've been reading and what, what I'm led to understand as time goes by. Uh, I, I'm not going to get too far into that again I, i'm only reporting on what i can see in front of me uh i think one of the reasons was he, he believed it went from an active shooter incident to a to a you know uh, one involving hostages i i'm not sure uh, you know how he came to that conclusion but one thing uh that did come out a policeman or police officer uh has to obey a lawful order uh, as in, you know, one they believe makes sense. Now, if you're standing there and hearing gunfire go off and, you know, young, young children uh, suffering, do you, do you stand there and wait? What else went on that we don't know about, I wonder? Uh, the commander, the school district's police chief, Peter Arredondo, had also initially thought the situation had changed uh to uh, a barricaded subject rather than active shooter as we just said he wrongly believed the situation was not an active threat anymore you got a person in a classroom with kids and he's got a gun I, i'd call that an active threat and again i'm just a layman uh arredondo has also repeatedly said he didn't consider himself the person in charge and assumed someone else had taken control of the police response not only did he have the wrong information, but he didn't have a radio with him either. He, he decided apparently to take that off before he went in for reasons unknown, thereby cutting off his means of communication with the outside world. Parents of the shooting victims and members of the Uvalde community have also uh, been criticising Arredondo's leadership, many calling him incompetent. At a school board meeting Monday, many community members called for his resignation. Apparently he's a city council member as well. Uh, having Pete still employed, knowing he is incapable of decision-making that saves lives is terrifying, said Brett Cross, the uncle of uh, one of the students who died. Uh, innocence doesn't hide. Innocence doesn't change its story, but innocence did die on May 24. A number of attendees at Monday's meeting even held signs reading Fire Pete Arredondo outside the school's auditorium. Arredondo publicly defended the police response to the shooting earlier this month, saying not a single responding officer ever hesitated even for a moment to put themselves at risk to save the children. I, I remember that coming out. More details of the 24th of May shooting are expected to be discussed in the Texas Senate on Tuesday. So that's the uh that's the uh latest from the uk perspective i i suppose uh you know and and we can see what's going on over there now it's very difficult to get my head around this because there's the whole second amendment thing uh the the right to bear arms as is enshrined in the american constitution and of course uh if somebody is going to attack you with a firearm under that con constitution you have a right to defend yourself uh it, it's as simple as that you have a right to possess a firearm and you have a right to use it in the defense of your life your family's life your property i have no problem with that that's uh part of the american way of life i suppose and you know i i could go to a school in the uk and you know take my son's school for example uh yeah julie keys it is shocking it keeps happening i i've read uh quite a large handful of similar stories from over there since this has happened and we're barely what four weeks on and uh you you know it keeps happening i could walk into a school in this country take my son's school for example uh you know i could walk through the front gate uh, I could walk into the reception area. I, we went to his sports day today and watched him uh, running around with his friends and 
having races and that and it's all uh it's not locked up or locked down in that nature there's no secure entry systems there's no it doesn't need to be because we we simply well we haven't done in a great number of years had an issue of this nature to make it so so what do you do uh you know you have to accept the fact that i suppose this is going to happen over there uh it's it's an undeniable fact that it is because the politicians and the government types don't seem to want to make any me meaningful change uh to to uh you know make this stop you can't alter the second amendment you wouldn't want to alter the second amendment it, it's a basic tenant of the american constitution and i think if you told americans that they're going to have the guns taken off of them i wouldn't want to be you when you said that to be quite honest so you you have to work you have to work with the system you, you know they they have the right to defend themselves if i move to america tomorrow i'd want to buy a firearm I'd, I'd want to defend myself it, it, you know it's that simple that simple so what do you do they're, they're talking about hardening targets uh, as in making these uh, facilities these school facilities and I, I suppose others more secure as a result uh, you know secure entries double doors uh, locked uh, you know uh, controlled access fences uh taking away the ability for them to ram anything uh slowing their access to corridors and internal doorways and everything down uh there's various things they are talking about and the whole idea is you have to slow that active shooter down to give law enforcement time to respond to give law enforcement time to take them out of the picture before anybody is harmed or the number is harmed that we see in this case or columbine or all the years before they're talking about police their response to they're talking about uh you know the the situation with the schools with their security i mean i i'm seeing people in the chat at the moment wondering whether this was a false flag operation uh designed to introduce rules to strip people's rights away from them this is this is also a distinct possibility i i uh, i I grant you. Uh, but there's one thing that I keep going through my mind. Right, and hear me out on this. If I'm in America and I have a license to do so, a, a lot of states now have uh, open or closed carry licenses. You can quite happily walk down the street uh, packing a firearm. Okay, fine. So what is the process involved in getting that firearm? Is there any Americans in the chat that can just tell me uh, what do you have to do to get a firearm uh, in, in America? Now, where I'm going with this is how could a young kid, I, I mean, what was he, 18, 19 years old, get his hands on a powerful assault rifle, let alone, I think the, the figure I saw was literally thousands of dollars worth of ammunition, and then go and do this where is the uh system that allowed this young person to go and buy that firearm and perpetuate this tragedy uh you know he, he went and slaughtered all these kids how did he get his hands on that firearm how was he checked was he checked or was it oh yeah yo yo you could you can pick these uh, you know look at look at the shelf behind me you can have two thousand rounds of ammunition besides and you can go and shoot up who the hell you like was it like that or or was there any proper checks does there need to be proper checks i'm not saying stop people buying a gun no 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 of course i'm not but i i do wonder how he got his hands on it in the first place you tell me what is the process? This is uh, the Daily Chat with Andy the Gabby Cabby, everybody.